January 7th, the year of our Lord, 1800. In the useless town of Summerhill, New York, a future president was born. That child was Millard Fillmore, and he's this week's American Douchebag. American Douche, American Douchebag. Fillmore is a quintessential American douchebag. In 1826, he married his school teacher, Abigail Powers, a notable piece of 1800s ass. Fillmore's political aspirations began in 1833 when he was appointed to Congress as a member of the Whig Party, a group today known as Wiggers. Up until this point, there are very few photographic records of Fillmore not looking gay. To gain support amongst voters, he decided to change his appearance, taking inspiration from Ebenezer Scrooge and Scrooge McDuck. The American public slowly began to warm up to Fillmore's douchebaggery, and in 1850, he became the 13th president after Zachary Taylor shit himself out of office. Fillmore's most famous act as a presidential douchebag was the Compromise of 1850, a series of laws which divided the country between slave and free territories. It was one small step toward the Civil War, but one giant leap for douchebags. Fillmore's attempt to recolonize blacks to Africa marked the end of his career, much like newly inducted American douchebag Michael Richards. Fillmore was succeeded by Franklin Pierce, And during the inauguration, he forced his wife, Abigail, to stand outside on the snowy Washington day. Later that night, she caught pneumonia and died. To mourn his wife's loss, Fillmore did what any other loving husband would do and went on a five-week vacation. Millard Fillmore died in 1874 and is buried in Forest Lawn in Buffalo, New York. His tombstone says only M.F. because he was a motherfucker. And thus concludes this week's American Douchebag. Join us next week as we learn about David Hasselhoff on American Douche, American Douche 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 Dou